Yo man, have you like totally seen my new gaming laptop? It's pretty rad, dude. Like, do you think you can run Armor 3? Dude, I don't know. That's really risky to try on a laptop. There's only one way to find out. So I've been trying to figure out some new stuff to make on Armor 3 when it suddenly hit me. I recently bought a new laptop for uni work and playing games on the go and one burning question I had when I was doing my research for the right laptop to buy was will it run Armour 3? I seem to always have to make these little disclaimers but I am not paid or endorsed to make this video. I just thought it would be a fun video idea for anyone thinking of playing games and going to uni or someone needing extra power with their portable workstation if you're into video editing and whatnot. Of course gaming laptops are by no means cheap, especially when you compare them to a fully fledged desktop machine. The price to performance is drastically unequal, mainly because it's difficult to squeeze a lot of power in such a small package. Right, so meet the ASUS ROG Strix GL703GM. It has a 17.3 inch screen, so it's on the bigger side as far as laptops go, but it is a very nice screen at that. It has a 120Hz refresh rate IPS panel, which makes all the difference in games that run at 60fps plus. Inside there's an i7-8750H which turbo boosts to around 4 gigahertz and when we get to the Armour 3 benchmark you'll understand why this processor is a beast. Next is the GTX 1060. You can also get a GTX 1070 version which has a 144 hertz screen and higher capacity SSD but that is very expensive. If you're on a tight budget the 1050Ti in most gaming laptops is a really nice happy medium and if you want to see some cheaper laptops that can still run games which I also found in my research they'll be linked in the description. Back to the laptop. We also have 16 gigabytes of RAM in the version I have which is perfect for multitasking and light rendering. A 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD which is just disgustingly fast. Like look at these boot times. It feels so awesome to rock up to a lecture, press the power button and be ready to rumble in a matter of seconds. And of course any games you install on it will benefit from shorter start up times and better texture loading for drive streaming heavy games like Armour or DayZ. Then there's a 1TB SSHD which is basically a hybrid of a mechanical and solid state drive. It's actually really nice they threw this in since most gaming laptops I looked at only had teeny tiny SSDs which isn't much use if you're planning on using it as a workstation or as a gaming rig with lots of big games that gobble up space. Now there is one thing you need to know, it feels light to handle but my god does it kill your back if you're carrying it around a lot. It weighs 3 kilos which is a whopping 6 pounds so keep that in mind. If this is a big no go for you the Razer Blade might be more suited to your needs. I actually find it easier to store and carry around with this waterproof protective pouch underneath my arm, so I'll be linking where I got this from as well as my backpack. In general, don't expect to be Usain Bolt if you're carrying around a gaming laptop. They usually require power packs to be 100% performance effective, plus your mouse and headset, you're usually lugging around a lot of hardware. Even then though, they still trump my gaming rig in terms of portability. Look at how it compares size wise to just my monitor. I can carry all of my stuff to play PC games in my rucksack, yet when I move to uni, I need these two big boxes plus another cardboard one filled with peripherals to transport my main rig. In terms of battery life and performance, there are a few pointers you ought to follow to get the best possible battery life. The number on the Amazon page says it's 12 hours, but that's a load of bullshit. Without any tweaking, it was running out of juice after one and a half hours, but with tweaks I can get a about four and a half hours out of it just doing Word Document Pro keyboard. One thing I'll stress is while the laptop is made well and has some nice brushed aluminium around it, don't be fooled. 
The screen is not made from the sides of an Abrams tank. It can open with one finger, but be very careful with it. Laptop screens are notoriously easy to bend, and this one feels like you could very possibly break its hinges if you're not careful. Obviously, this goes without saying. If you're spending a premium on a gaming laptop, you should treat it with a great deal of respect. And that's one thing this machine really emanates. Respect. The amount of people that have complimented me for my laptop has been really crazy. Whether I'm in lectures or in the library studying, being a super duper ultra productive uni student. <coughs> people have always picked up on its design. It looks the real deal, and unlike a lot of other gaming laptops, it's not obnoxiously nerdy. It's also pretty thin too, at 2.4cm. I would say you could easily get away with using this for business purposes because of how pleasing it is on the eyes, and if the keyboard is too much and too flashy, you can always disable it so it looks more professional. One of my concerns when I got this laptop was how I would be sat down in a quiet lecture room and the laptop would be pumping out fan noises like a fighter jet but luckily it's been pretty damn good when it's on battery power the fans stay quiet but while we're gaming well <laughs> it's a lot more noticeable final touch-up points are the speakers are good but could do with being a bit louder. The webcam is awful, the Wi-Fi card inside it is mind-blowingly fast, the I.O. connectivity is surprisingly good, and the memory and drive bays can be upgraded, which is nice for longevity. Now for the exciting stuff, what you all came here for, the gaming performance. So there you have it, Armour 3 running on a laptop. Pretty amazing if you ask me. This laptop is amazingly fast for general productivity, however I think 
one big con for me is the battery life to performance ratio. I can get great battery life if I just use it for Word with Wi-Fi off and the brightness turned down. It's like four to five hours, but my God, as soon as I open up loads of tabs, turn the brightness up, do some light photo editing and bits and bobs, without power, it tanks. In short, if you're on the go and you need something for productivity and gaming if you're a student but you're not a workaholic traveller who relies on battery life, then this might be the perfect laptop for you. It delivers above and beyond in terms of gaming performance. The screen is beautiful and sharp, the build quality is fantastic, and the specs are amazing for such a small form factor. If you're at uni or college or whatever, you'll likely have a few power sources around you anyway. But if you're the sort of person who needs non-stop 12 hours of productivity, get off this damn video and buy a Surface Pro. <laughs> But seriously, this is an amazing laptop. I'd highly recommend it if you're into your gaming and you don't have the space for a big rig on your desk. One final thing I'd recommend for typing, posture and airflow is something called a riser. These lift up your laptop so they get more airflow from underneath, promoting lower temperatures, better frames because of less thermal throttling, and of course, nicer ergonomics for typing. I hope you guys enjoyed this slightly different video for my channel. It was a lot of fun to make, and I actually feel a bit like Linus Tech Tips. Also, apologies for the rubbish camera quality. I'm stuck with using my iPhone for all of my real life shots. Something I haven't invested in yet is a decent camera. Rate the video if you did find this useful, and I hope you guys have an excellent week. Tommy out.